This video demonstrates the importance of a systematic approach to LV lead implantation. You don't want to assume that just because you get a lead in the vein uh, that your implant is complete. So despite uh, two view occlusive CS venograms with full strength contrast, there was really only one vein, uh, target vein, that was apparent. So rather than just throwing a lead in, we decided to use the delivery system, the telescoping delivery system. And you choose the vein selector to try to match the angle of the takeoff of the vein that you're going to put the lead in. And you can see here that the branch that comes off down here near the os of the CS has a rather flat angle that, which matches nicely uh, the vertebral shape vein selector. So we paired the vertebral vein selector with the renal LVI uh, illustrated here. So here's the renal vein, or here's the uh, vein selector, the vertebral vein selector, and here back here is the uh, subselector. And you'll also notice that there's an Amplatz wire. We put that in there using the Amplatz support wire technique to ensure stability while working close to the os of the CS. So um, before we uh, put the lead in, uh, we injected full strength contrast through the vein selector uh, to determine whether there are any other, uh, might be other, other options for uh, LV lead placement in case the LV lead in this branch uh, didn't give us satisfactory results. So when we put the lead in, it turned out that there was phrenic pacing and high thresholds all along the vein, despite use a, using a quadrupolar lead and positioning the lead in uh, the various branches and sub-branches. But fortunately, uh, we did note that there was an alternative target vein uh, identified by the initial injection of contrast uh, through the vein selector that we didn't see with the selective venogram. So the goal then is to get the LV lead into this smaller lateral wall branch up here. And you'll notice that the angle of the takeoff of this branch actually matches the takeoff or the angle of the standard vein selector better than it does the vertebral. So this time we decided uh, to pair the renal LVI with a standard vein selector and go after this side branch up here. So here you can see we've engaged the branch and ejected contrast uh, to confirm that we're in the branch. And we're also uh, identifying side, side branches uh, that we might want to put the lead down. And we chose the larger of the two um, and put two 014 inch wires into the vein. Uh, we then advanced the vein selector over the wires deep as we could uh, into, the, into the vein to create a rail. You can see there the, the wires in the lead or the wires in the vein in the vein selector deep in the branch. And then using uh, the wire stabilized vein selector, we were able to advance the renal LVI subselector shown here uh, into the branch. And from there, we were able to advance uh, the target, excuse me, able to advance the LV lead uh, into the vein and get a good result. The teaching points here are that for successful implant, you really need to be prepared for the worst. And if you just think that throwing a lead into the vein is going to uh, result in a successful implant. Of course it does sometimes, but what happens when it doesn't? You really should be prepared for that and not just put the lead in the vein. Using the vein selector for a selective venogram before placing the lead may reveal options uh, that were not seen on the occlusive venogram. The angle of the vertebral vein selector is well suited for the veins with a flat, flat takeoff, which are usually found proximal to Vucin's valve. The angle of the standard vein selector is well suited for veins with a more acute takeoff. 
And finally, the vein selector can be advanced over two wires uh, into the target vein to create a rail over which to advance the renal LVI subselector. I hope you found this useful. Thank you.